So we've got the admin server running. Let's go ahead and log into the admin console. So for this exercise, we're going to create a JMS server. So to do that, we're actually going to walk through creating the JMS server like we've done previously in the JMS lab. But we're going to record our actions. And if you've noticed, the top menu bar here, there's a record button. So you can click this record button. So let's go ahead and do that now. So click record. And you can see here there's a message that says, that says the recording session has started and then it specifies the location of the Python script or the, or the WLST script, which as I mentioned is built on top of Python. And so you can see here that the script has been placed in the domain home directory. Okay, so this is recording. We're not doing anything, so nothing's being recorded yet. But as soon as we start changing things or invoking actions, those will get recorded. Simply navigating around and clicking on things won't, uh, won't log anything in the script. So let's go ahead and create our JMS server. So in the lab, the lab guide specifies the configuration parameters for this JMS server. Okay, so let's see here under messaging, JMS servers, click new. Then I'm going to call this my scripted JMS server. And then I want to create a file store. A f okay, and click next. In this file store, I'm going to call my scripted file store. And we're going to target everything to the admin server. And the directory here is going to be under U01, Udemy, domains, WLST domain. We're just going to stick it in the home directory for now. And then hit OK. Okay, so if you, okay, then now in the drop down, let's go ahead and specify that file store and then click next and target it to the admin server and click finish. So you can see here that we have our scripted JMS server, then the file store that we created, and it's been targeted to the admin server. So once you're done with that, go ahead and click on that record button again. And you'll end the recording session and then it reminds you where that script was saved to. So note the location, it's under domain home. And all the scripts are time stamped. So now let's minimize this and go back to our terminal window. And let's take a look in your domain home, you should see a whoop, a script.py file. So your file name will be different than mine, but that's the file that you want to look at. So view this file, and this is what gets generated by WebLogic. So you can see here that, so you won't see any connect statements. So the record engine automatically assumes that you are connected. So it doesn't capture that. We're already connected. We logged in using the admin console, so we're already connected. But we did start an edit session the minute that we created a resource. So we start, did a start edit, and then we created a file store. So in order to create a JMS server, a JMS server requires a persistent store like a file store. And so WebLogic here is smart enough to know that we need to create the file store first and then create the JMS server. So what it does is creates that file store, and you can see that there's a there's a command to create a file store called create file store, but you could also use just the create command and then specify the type as file store. And then you can see here that it, that it changes directory into the file store, scripted file store mbean, and then specifies the directory and its targets. And notice the target, and notice the set syntax here is a little bit different for specifying a target. When you specify targets in an online mode, you can specify a single value or an, an array. And that's what this syntax is specifying, an array. 
And then once the file store is once the file store is completed, we actually have to activate those changes first, so that when we create the JMS server, the JMS server can find that persistent store. So it doesn't exist. So think of this: when you create a resource, it does not exist until you activate the changes. If you do a save, it only saves them in memory. It does not save them to disk. Okay, then we get another start and edit because the activate canceled our edit session or ended our edit, edit session. And then here's the syntax for creating a JMS server. So as you can see, the record function is great for figuring out, for, for generating quick and dirty um, WLST scripts for performing uh, certain functions. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna modify this script. So I should have entered in here using VI. So go ahead and edit this script. Don't view it like I did. And what we want to do is we want to be able to run this script from the command line. So we need to connect to an admin server first and foremost. So let's go ahead and add the connect command in here at the very top. So we're going to do a connect and then enter in the, the syntax for connecting. Oops. Demo A. And then we need to switch to the edit tree and then the rest is fine. We should remove this start edit down here. I'm not sure why WebLogic stuck this in here, but we can exit. So when the script ends, we will exit WebLogic scripting tool. Okay, so now I'll go ahead and save this. Before we can run this though, let's go ahead and delete the resources that we just created otherwise we'll get errors when we try to run this script so back in your admin console go ahead and delete your jms server and then go to your persistent stores and delete it okay so no restarts are necessary very good so back in our terminal window we are going to invoke this script and the way you invoke it is you run that wlst.sh uh, script and you are yeah script and then you pass in the generated script as a parameter so I'm just gonna run wlst.sh and then the script name so what will happen is that this script will now connect to WebLogic and execute the commands to create the persistent store and the JMS server so you can see here here's the connecting string and that we successfully connected. And the output is kind of vague. We don't, WLST by default does not output what functions are being created. So you won't see server created or persistent store created. That type of logging isn't available natively. You would have to put that logging in yourself. However, you want to implement logging in Python or Jython, you can do it here as well. Okay, so let's go back to the console and see if those resources are there. I'm gonna click on JMS servers and look at that. There's our scripted JMS server, just the way it was created when we did it through the admin console. And then if I go to persistent stores, scripted file stores there as well. So this, this all looks great. So very easy, very quick.